let's finish up with the UVs and material for the padding, and then we'll have our game res model ready to go into Substance Painter. So the last pieces are these padding pieces, and we have a few of these, and these are actually gonna be a lot easier to do because they don't have an inside. So we have the cowl, we have the belt, we have one pad for the hip piece, just like with the other hip piece, we didn't mirror it yet. So we'll create UVs for that. So with the belt, I'm gonna show you how much easier this is not having to have seams. So go ahead and do an auto map. And then I'm just gonna start with one piece of it. And watch this, I'm not gonna cut anything. I'm not gonna do anything. So I'm gonna stitch it together, go across, stitch, unfold. Looks like a weird bug, stitch, stitch, unfold, boom. Because there's no seams, it's open. And so all you really have to do is just stitch, 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 and then you should be ready to go. We'll go ahead and I don't even have to choose the corners. I can just do another sew and another unfold. Let's cut it in the middle so that we can get more, get more space there. And then I'll scale it down and move it off to the side. So there's our belt. This piece we will do the same way. So automatic map, stitch, sew, unfold. Let's delete the history. We can mirror this over. And let's actually, I'm going to choose a setting here. So I'm going to go into mirror and I'm going to choose not to combine it with the original. So we'll go ahead and mirror it. And now it's a separate piece and I can just grab it, move this off, flip the UVs. And I've got two pieces with UVs. I'll delete the history. So now we've got the belt and the two side pieces. The cow is going to be the same way. Automatic map. This is so much easier. So go to edge, stitch. I don't even care what I'm stitching. Unfold, boom. And you can do that because again, it's open. You know that this will easily unfold. Nothing uh, connects back onto itself. So when you have those kinds of objects, it makes it so much easier. All right, so now let's select all of our objects. Oh, I wanna do these leather pieces. These are like little tiny leather straps. I want to actually do those on the padding as well because it's a similar kind of material. So let's just do a quick auto map. Stitch that and that. Scale it down and move it off. And then let's do the other one. Okay, now let's simply select everything because that's all we have left. I'll make these straps the same size. And now let's come in and lay these out. So I know I'm gonna have to get a little bit smaller with these. Here's our belt. These pieces need to be bigger. If you take a look at the size of these if we want them to be proportional to the belt they need to be a little bit bigger so they should be the biggest thing on the map okay so i'll come in and lay it out like that you can either lay this out like so or you could put it you know on the other side kind of bring these over here Here's our belt. These, let's kind of try to fit in here. Oh, it's so close. Not overlapping, so we're good. And then I'll just drop these in this open space. Rotate it so they're straight. 
and make them the same size. And now let's create our material. All right, so another material, blend 14, we'll call this padding. And let's assign this material. And we'll leave it, I'm gonna leave this kind of an off-white. Gray. Yeah, let's maybe add a little bit of yellow to it. Okay, so let's rename our hip pad here. Drop the geometry, any geometry that we're missing. Okay, so let's turn everything back on. So I'm going to turn on all the game stuff. I'm going to go into the body. And I thought I made, a, made this purple, but maybe not. And we still have the belt. I'm going to drop these out. Check for all the pieces. So now having the different materials separated, hopefully it, it makes sense. It's easy for us to see what's on the same map. Everything that's pink is on the same material or texture. Everything that's brown, everything that's gold, everything that's blue and so forth. So if you want to go in and check, you can go into all of your materials. We can check, for instance, the eye inner, and we can see that that geometry has the materials. So I can go ahead and delete unused materials. I can select all of my geometry and delete the history. And a great way to check and see if our UVs are good is to simply select the overall group and fingers crossed you shouldn't see anything outside of this space everything should fit nicely in here now if you're looking at everything it's all going to be overlapping and it's going to be kind of a jumble but if we look at it material by material you're going to see those layouts that we created on the body here i'm going to actually make this sash bigger because we can, and it's a separate material. So I'm going to make this a bit larger. And we can do any kind of edit and editing that we want. Let's go in and anything that we don't have named, let's go ahead and name it. So our hinge pieces, we can simply add some letters to those. Same thing here. All right, let's delete our layer. Okay, and you can come in anything that has transform on it. You can freeze those. Anything that has, you can see negative scale here. We'll go ahead and freeze that. You can see if you freeze something that you copy the UVs on, it's going to turn red. That's okay if you're using overlapping UVs. So we aren't. And so in that instance, we would come in here and flip anything that's red. Okay, we can also check our UVs by going into the hypershade. And if I go onto one of these materials and I right click and say select objects with material, it's going to select everything on there. So I can check, okay, here's my gold. How's that looking? Here's my head, horns, padding, sash. Okay, textures like this, there's certainly a lot of wasted space there. If you have other pieces that you want to include on that, you can certainly do that. The eyes, the outer pupil, and so forth. And I would say it looks pretty good. So now all we have left is our game geometry and our high geometry, which we used as a base to create this. Let's go ahead and select all our polygons. Let's just do a soften edge. It's going to soften the normals rather than seeing the faceted look. And so this is the game geometry that we're able to create. Let me pull off the UV editor. So we were able to take our high resolution model that we created in ZBrush in the first course, go in using some really cool retopology tools inside of Maya to recreate the same sort of silhouette in a way that we can actually use in game. So this could be loaded into a game and we'll actually do that at the end of the next course where we create textures for this in Substance Painter. We'll go in with the current setup. We'll create all of our textures. We will output those in a way that Unity can read, and we'll set those back up in Unity 
so that we can see it in a real-time environment and see that it works. So I hope you've enjoyed going through this process of creating game res creatures from our high resolution concept skulls. If you want to continue on, you can go ahead and bring these into Substance Painter. If not, I hope you've enjoyed the last few hours going through this. If you are continuing on, we'll see you in the next course where we will start to paint our textures in Substance Painter, and then we will see our model come alive inside of Unity.